Hey, what's up, fellow age groupies? Welcome to another episode of the Age Groupies Podcast. I'm Mike Rigo, and along with my co-host, Lindsay Hyken, we're here to talk to you about all things related to endurance sports from an amateur athlete perspective. Talk about how to have fun along the way and stop taking ourselves so seriously all the time. You can follow the show on Instagram at Age Groupies, join our Age Groupies page on Facebook, and look us up by name, Lindsay Hyken and Mike Ergo on Strava. If you have any questions, comments, or topic ideas, feel free to email us at agegroupies at gmail.com. And if you enjoy the show, please leave a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Go read them on the show. It's pretty fun. We got some that really like us and, you know, the occasional ones who don't. Whatever your opinion is, let us know and we'll read it. So, today's episode is an interview with my friend, Rob Rahelst, a.k.a. Fireman Rob. Fireman Rob has been a fixture of Iron Man. He's the guy wearing full firefighter gear for the run portion of the full and half Iron Man triathlons. He started this to honor the firefighters who died during the attacks of September 11th, 2001. And he continues to bring awareness to PTSD in the firefighter community. Rob has set world records started a nonprofit, spoken to thousands as a motivational speaker, and most recently founded Endurance Zone, which features Endurance Zone TV, the Netflix of endurance sports. You guys are going to like this one. I first met Rob last year at Super Frog when he was part of the Gold Star Initiative, and instantly I knew we were going to be good friends, and my instincts were correct, because now we're buddies. So without any more, let's get to the episode. Fireman Rob, welcome to Age Groupies, brother. Good to have you on the show. Oh, I'm so honored to be on here. I've I've been uh, hankering to get on this show for a while. <laughs> hankering? <laughs> that was the best word I could come up with. Well, welcome. I like it, man. <laughs> that's, yeah, a non talking... that's a non-California word. <laughs> Where are you from? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, grooving? I don't know what, what would be the California <laughs> word. <part. laughs> Hankering, Jones, and Feening, all words not used by us. But uh, Welcome into our tribe. Yes. Welcome to the I Age Groupies. I love it. I love it. It's, so, it's, my, it's my people. It's like uh, the Age Groupies are my people. It's like I've, I, I don't think I've ever seen – well, I did see a pro when I was doing Kona once. I was actually just starting my marathon, and they're going into the finish. So I, that was the closest I've seen them. <laughs> And yes. they blurred by, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. I don't know who it was. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So, Rob, like, I mean, you've got a lot of stuff going on right now. We got Endurance Zone, Endurance Zone TV. Uh, you got your motivational speaking, your book, your online training, your coaching. Uh, let's start at the beginning, though. Where does all this start? You know, all of it started. Uh, and it's it's kind of interesting because all of this started back um, so back on September 11th I actually did search and recovery I was only a year on the fire department in the city of Madison in Wisconsin and I did some I did search and recovery at that point um, at 9/11 and for about 10 years after that I was I was really lost I didn't really have a meaning in life a purpose in life and the 10th anniversary of 9/11 came around. And it actually was on Ironman Wisconsin Day. Mm -hmm. And you know how us crazy age groupies um, like to do things that are a little different. And so what I, what I decided, um, and I don't think I was drinking when I decided this, but it, it <laughs> been something involved. But uh, I decided to run in my full firefighter gear for the run portion of Ironman Wisconsin to really inspired through my actions and not my words because at that time I wasn't really talking much about it and so I wanted to inspire through my actions and crazy enough when I got out onto that run the the power that it had not only for me and and Mike you you know this from doing that gold star initiative is the power behind the actions is always something that you don't realize what it's going to be until you're actually in that moment and from there, it's just transitioned into something of being able to help find myself, um, still obviously searching every single day to, to be whole, but uh, yeah. it's, been, it's been an amazing ride and it's not going to stop. The footage of that was pretty cool to see people come and, and you know pat you on the back, high five you, handshake, hugs, everything along the way. 
especially for that first race too, but I'm sure every race that you've been part of. So did you have people trying to talk you out of doing this, like running full firefighter gear? Cause I imagine there's be at least one person being like, you sure about this, man? Yeah. I think there was maybe one person that said this is a good idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think uh, there's a lot of people that just said you're crazy and to kind of run back in time. I, right before Ironman Wisconsin, I was like, you know, I got to test this out. So I, I was going to test it. I tested it out at 70.3 at um, Racine. And for those of you who don't know, Racine was always in July. And Ooh. I never claimed to be the smartest guy in the block yeah. or even smart, but uh, it was hot. 110 degrees with the heat index the day that I tried to try this out. And the race director I knew and um, before the race, I said, hey, this is what I'm going to do and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, okay, Rob, that's fine. But if you die, just remember, I'm going to revive you and kill you again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was Wisconsin not, it was, is um, uh, humid too, right? So extra oh, steamy. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not something that you'd uh, voluntarily wear um, full uh, clothes, firefighter gear that doesn't breathe at all. I was going to say, not- I'm not familiar with firefighter gear, like what it feels like, but I'm guessing it's not like moisture wicking and breathable. No, it's not form fitting either. It's, um, <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not something that uh, is meant for endurance athletes. <laughs> oh, man. How much did it weigh altogether? So everything together weighs around 50 pounds and, and it, more or less um, depends like, you know, when I was in Kona or uh, St. George, like the amount of water, cause it, uh, it'll absorb a lot of the water. And so oh. it just gets heavier and heavier. It's, it's just kind of, you know, it's, it's a glutton for punishment. Mike here. I want to talk to you about you can super starch. You can is what I consume on the race course and for long or intense training sessions. Now, it's different than any sports nutrition out there because they use super starch. Super starch is a complex carbohydrate that doesn't spike blood sugar, delivering a slow and steady release of glucose into the bloodstream. Stable blood sugar provides steady energy to both the muscles and the brain and controls cravings caused by blood sugar lows. I recently used this to complete the Pandemic Man 70.3 using only UCAN, and let me tell you guys, I was surprised by how well it worked, pleasantly surprised. I didn't need to use any gels, anything, just you can. And I felt great. I didn't feel bloated, didn't feel hungry, didn't have any of those intense cravings I get on the race course a lot. So I want you to try it out too. Learn about why you should feel the pursuit with you can and save 10% on all your orders by using the link in the show notes or entering the promo code you can inspire me at checkout. That's U C A N I N. S P I R E M E at checkout. Thanks. Yeah. But both of you guys, I mean, I'm someone who, you know, was happy to just finish. I'm one of those kind of age groupies. Like I've friggin' it's middle of the night and I got across the line before they cut it off carrying nothing. Um, and both of you guys carry a lot of, you know, weight on the run. Um, but I'm just wondering from both of you, <clears throat> if the weight is a non-issue or maybe in some ways is helpful because it keeps reminding you of your why for racing, is, does that play into it in terms of like the, phys- the physicality of carrying something, um, just kind of keep you focused on what the reason for doing what you're doing? Yeah, I think, I think it's interesting from my perspective, and it took me a long time to understand this. And I don't know if this rings true with you, Mike, too. I know we've talked about it a few times, but like the pain that you put yourself through um, kind of gives you that. F- I mean, the seals always say this, that, you know, the pain lets you know you're still alive. Yeah. And I think that's that's part of, you know, when I'm out there, when I'm doing this, uh, there's a lot, a lot of pain. And it's not just the physical pain, it's the mental pain. Uh, putting myself in moments where I'm uncomfortable, I'm very uncomfortable when I'm by myself or in my own head. And so I think that pain actually helps to um, heal me uh, to the point that I can actually function. What are your thoughts, Mike? Yeah, it's the same, the, the pain, here's what I remember, especially from Kona, is 
I was going down a dark hole, you know, reliving a lot of trauma and a lot of thoughts of people dying and a lot of thoughts of killing. And I said, what do I need to, what, what can I do to put myself back in this moment? And I was like, well, my legs hurt. My legs really fucking hurt. <laughs> and then I said, okay, that means I have legs. That means I'm alive. Right. That means I'm doing this. That means I'm doing this for a purpose. And so like I could build on that like little by little by little. But especially carrying the flag, uh, there's just, besides the support from everybody else, the why of it is so strong that I, I, I run faster and I run better with a flag than, with, than without. That's true. That's so true. And it's, you know, you, you said, you're saying that you don't, you don't have the, lo- the carry to the load like we do, but at the same time, every single age group, yet, and I think this rings true, and a lot of them maybe don't tell their stories, I get to be at the back of the pack at most races, um, not by choice, but because I'm slow. And uh, (laughs) Mike, you don't have to agree with that so quickly. (laughs) Um, Of course not. No, no, no. You're so fast, bro. Hey, yeah, this that was is... like that was like rapid fire. Yeah, you're right, Rob. <laughs> hey, this is slow. actually. I just realized something. <clears throat> if I put something heavy on, I can pretend that that's why I'm in the back. <laughs> Instead of pretend, that pretend I'd be there like, anyway. <laughs> put something on that looks like it's heavy, but it's like you know a styrofoam like firefighter gear. The TV stuff. prop, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> hey, you just gave away all my secrets. No. <laughs> oh yeah. My favorite, my favorite part was when I get done with the race and people are taking off the gear and they, they take the air pack and the air pack itself weighs about 35 pounds oh. and they're, they're, they're expecting it to be light. You know, it's like, Oh, it's an oxygen pack. It's like, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're like, oh! <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, well, I hope you ruined your back. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting going back to that point of like, I think everybody has this, this huge weight that they carry with them, that they're unburdening themselves during these, these endurance races, because why in good sense would anybody, especially like a guy with two degrees, Mike or Joe, um, <laughs> go out there <laughs> and, and do this 140.6 miles. Mm-hmm. Most of us don't, don't go 140.6 miles without stopping at quick trip, getting, uh, a coffee and a donut yep and then maybe 10 miles more down the road to go oh i forgot chips you know <laughs> yeah that's a good point <clears throat> yeah so. yeah yeah that's true i think every age groupie has a reason or most of them do um i mean like you said most people don't really share their story but i can say that running in the back of the pack just out there on santa rosa you could tell i mean people were in their own heads at the end especially when it was dark and we just had headlamps on <laughs> I can see it's yeah. a little dot that makes it <clears throat> just unique. But you could see on people's faces that they were going inside, you know, to tap into their strength, whatever that was, and their reason why they were doing this and kind of talking themselves through that last <clears throat> six, seven miles. So, Rob, speaking of talking people, you know, talking to themselves through and having to go deep, how deep did you have to go when you set the world record for most 70.3s in a year? And how many was that? Well, oh God. <laughs> the fun- <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you two stories here. One, well, it was 20, uh, 23 that I did in one year. And not all of them were half Ironmans because uh, there was some uh, full distance that I had to do. Of course. Um, and they didn't count for two. <laughs> I don't know how they count in London, but uh, for some reason, <laughs> it didn't count as two. But going. Like, I, I honestly look back on that year. I don't remember a lot of it. And that's, it's sad to me, but I don't remember a lot of it. I had to go to some place because I still had to work at the firehouse. I still had my family. I still was speaking. Um, and then in addition, I st- still had to figure out how to go to 23 different places to be able to do these races. And yeah, the, the darkness and some of these races, there's like literally 40 people there. <laughs> I mean, wow. I mean, how do you, you can't get motivated for 40 people. You sit there and you go That's hard. Yeah. You're like, uh, we had a picnic or is this actually a race? I'm not sure what's going on here. So yeah. were they all domestic? I mean, were they all? No, I had, oh, okay. I had, uh, let's see. I had two, <laughs> see, I don't remember. I had two internationals. I think I was, yeah, there was two international races. Um, awesome. yeah, I think it was only two. Yeah, it was only two. 
but yeah, it was just, it was, it was crazy because, but it was, it was cool because there was certain points and you guys mentioned this, there's certain points along the, the path where when I was out there, I started to understand my why I'd feel sorry for myself and I'd see it feel like tired or fatigued or pain, um, which is kind of a daily thing, but out there you'd have those glimmering moments where somebody come up to you and goes, Hey, thank you so much for being out here in this gear. Um, you remind me of my dad or your, mm. you know, all the, all these kind of things. And I, I'm sure you've been the same Mike with uh, the flag and, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you kind of tell yourself, you know, shut up, you're alive. You have a heartbeat, keep moving, yeah. suck it up, stop being a pansy. You know, this is, this is what it is. This is what you have to do. And, and it's, 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 it was a cool experience, but yeah, the darkness was, uh, was very uh, clear in those moments. So just for our listeners who <clears throat> don't know, I wanted to clarify something. You broke the record for most half Ironmans in a year and you were wearing the fireman gear the whole time. That is correct. They won't even give me one for that. <laughs> I had to beat somebody in spandex, you know, it was, yeah. like, it was like, it was like, it was, I they're mean, like, it was, no one else is going to do that. So it's not really a thing. It's just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it was. It was, was. It was like, it was like, yeah, um, we're, we like crazy, but we'd rather do longest fingernails than have somebody who yeah. nobody else is going to do. <laughs> that's a good one. Everybody remembers the guy with the longest fing- fingernails. It's somewhere from India. We carries him around in the bag. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'd yeah. like to see that guy do a triathlon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you imagine, imagine swimming past him. Oh yeah, the bike, God. the swim. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, it's it's hard. It's hard. It's one of those things. It's like, um, and, and I think that's the, my favorite part about endurance athletes is we may, you know, you may see an obstacle in the way, and that was the obstacle was well, you have to if you want to break Guinness World Record, you have to do it the the number that somebody else did in just spandex, and it was like, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> you know it was okay now what do i have to do instead of sitting there going well, why why yeah. you know you, you just suck it up and go yeah so iron man gets wind of your story they feature you a bunch and eventually you get to kona i mean what's kona like for you <laughs> kona you know and i don't know if a lot of people know this story like with kona so it was great it was the um they did uh see my brain is going um, uh, uh, Kona, Kona, I don't even remember what it was. Never mind. But anyways, the <laughs> Ironman did this uh, great program, uh, Kona inspired. That's what it was. Kona inspired. And I get to Kona and there's so many other good, amazing athletes there that are there. Yeah. Alfred and Mike Thompson and all these others. And when you're there, like I'm literally about a mile and a half, two miles from the expo in, in Kona. And my sponsors and some of the foundation stuff, and they kept saying, hey, can you come and do this interview? Or, hey, can you come to the booth and do this? So I'm carrying my bag of 50 pounds of fire gear in Kona, like from 7 o'clock in the morning to oh my like God. 7 p.m. at night, like all week long. <laughs> all yeah. week long, I'm carting it back and forth because you can't, uh, you're not driving down there. That's yeah, a exactly. great way to taper. <laughs> oh, that was, was fantastic. My wife's sitting here going, I don't know if this makes sense. I was right. like, but I got to do it. This is, this is what it's about, you know? And so I get to race day and it was exciting, but I was so stressed out. And I'm sure the same with you, Mike. I was like, I am carrying a burden of, I have to finish. Like, what's the point of me yeah. being out here if I don't finish? And getting into the um, later stage of that, like on the on the run portion, like the first mile in, I was wrecked. Oh, <laughs> I had twenty five. Yeah. I had twenty five miles to go, and I'm like, this is this is just dumb. Mm-hmm. Like, who, who's figured this out? Like, and mm. so I get onto the Queen K, and you know, being one of the faster slow people, um, it's so dark, and I and when you're on the Queen K everything looks the same and so yes. you start you start m- mentally abusing yourself going ah oh, this is the stoplight where i turned then you get to that stop you're like a, no, it's not. no. <laughs> oh. 
you get, yeah. You get the next one, you're like, this is the one. So crushing. Well, so crush. Well, people, that's a, you know, like at least I didn't have the people there knowing what I was doing. You know, they saw the camera crew, but I mean, you were wearing firefighter gear. Yeah. You're like so, everybody knows. Okay, this is a special thing happening. So mm-hmm. I, I just think of like the, the comedian, <clears throat> late comedian Greg Giraldo, where he gets this big opening applause, and for one of his specialties, he goes, "Wow, well, better not suck." <laughs> 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 that's exactly 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 right and it was it was it was a it was everything that i had in my body i don't remember the last mile of that race um i actually had to watch it back when nbc had coverage or some of the yeah. social media posts i didn't i didn't actually know what i did and one of the funny stories is the next morning um we had uh, breakfast and it was like a cho- team chocolate milk or team refuel and Rennie was there and T.O. and Rennie goes, oh, it's so great to see you at the finish line. And I go, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She goes, uh, you don't remember, do you? And I was like, nope. Oh. <laughs> I, there was not much that I remembered. Uh, Dan, uh, the <clears throat> Danny Danny from Newton was on the on the run. He's like, oh, it was so great to see you on a Leahy Drive. And I was like, yeah, it was, that was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it's part of it. I'm sure it's somewhere in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a video of it to prove it to me? <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's a, it's a great experience. I mean, it's one of those things where you, the human potential is, is endless. Mm-hmm. And it's great to be able to be part of that understanding for age groupies to be able to understand that it's up to you. If you want it, go out and get it because it's possible. You know, our, our, our physical bodies do not limit us from amazing potential. And I think that's the great equalizer is, you know, even us who have mentally, we're mentally damaged very heavily. Um, yeah. We can still persevere and find a way to do it. I actually think that that's an advantage being mentally damaged in some ways. I don't, I don't mean that in a funny way, although that's probably true too. <laughs> I think it's funny. I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah, you got to be a little nuts. <laughs> But also just, I think, you know, you guys overcoming what you've overcome and I've had some stuff I've shared. It's like uh, already we already have this uh, knowledge of like it can get real dark and weird and you can still move forward and have good days after that. And so I think that knowledge in and of itself puts us at somewhat of an advantage, actually. Um, I think so, too. Yeah, I really I think you you nailed that, Lindsay. And so speaking of the good days ahead. Rob, tell us about what you're doing today with your speaking, yeah. your coaching with Endurance Zone and everything. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of excitement, a lot of excitement coming up with, uh, with my speaking. I love, I love being able to help individuals find themselves. And, you know, like I, it's always interesting, like I'm still finding myself. So I, I get to talk to people about finding yourself, but in the same point, I'm going with the, uh, down the journey the same way they are. And I'm telling them, well, this is how I'm doing it. And so it's not one of those magic pills that anybody can take or like, listen to me because I'm the greatest. It's like, no, no, I'm (laughs) not the greatest. I'm not even close to, um, but I'm a, I'm a normal person that goes through struggles, goes through challenges. And so I get to talk about, you know, passion and ownership and decisions and mental strength and resilience and all these great things that I didn't create, but I'm using to help build myself. And so that's, you know, that's the fun thing that I get to do um, from becoming Fireman Rob is, is be able to do the speaking. And I think the, the one thing that really is exciting me is this Endurance Zone TV is that it's been a long time needed, you know, and in, mm-hmm. in the endurance sports community to have everybody come together to have a collaborative site that works with all different angles of endurance sports, which worked with all different events. We're so segmented but we're all alike from the endurance uh, runner that runs a hundred miles to the uh, channel swimmer, to the water polo player, to the OCR, to the triathletes. We're all the same. And like Lindsay said before, it's our why it's our why. And it's that story that makes us a little different, a little quirky, Mm -hmm. a little odd, but that's because we want something more out of life than just to exist. And you go to Endurance Zone TV, you can watch a lot of things while you're riding, while you're sitting on your couch, 
you can get great entertainment like this one, uh, you know, and uh, when you don't have a guest that just talks a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Makes it easier for us. I like it. <laughs> I'm not you even awake yet. Next time so not perfect. to have me on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, you can always just mute my mic. It's um, but, you know, and, and, it, and it's really cool. We're seeing a lot of different perspectives. And I think that's the one thing in endurance sports is we can't, we can't criticize people. We can't put them down because they don't, they're not saying this or they're not saying that, or they're not highlighting this. It's like, well, if you want to have that highlighted, let us know, you know, we're here. We're not going anywhere. Endurancezone.com. You let us know. What do you want to see? Complaining to endurance, to endurance athletes is the people that are sitting in the porta potty for an hour and a half, wasting everybody else's time because they didn't take enough fiber that day. Yeah, <laughs> that's my best. Yeah, exactly. Opinion. You know, I, yeah. it's it's one of those things. We're we want to we want to create a community. We want to create collaboration. We want to bring as much information, as much entertainment as we can. And we can't do that without people letting us know what they want to see. So I love it. Uh, it's great to have you guys on it. Um, it's just going to be so much fun. Yeah. It's just a start. <clears throat> yeah. No, I think it's super exciting. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, f- I appreciate the opportunity from you guys just because um, we've all had lots of discussions within the endurance community recently about diversity and how there is none. I mean, let's right. be real. There's just none. It's pretty I wide see- out there. Yeah. Oh, it's... A, the swim start is a sea of white, you know, <clears throat> and I might see one other black person on the course. Maybe I saw one at Santa Rosa and we were like, Hey, we're pointing at each other. <laughs> we're like, we're out here doing white shit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, but the truth is there's so much um, that the, the endurance community offers. I mean, you guys have both described it, you know, Rob, you just described all of the personal benefits that you get from, engaging in endurance sports and then there's this bigger community that you know supports us and is like it's our people it's our tribe and and so i i as a african-american athlete do not want my people to miss out on all of the joy that is um the result of of being a member of the endurance community Mm -hmm. it's just black people don't know about it you know there's a lot of in within the black community there's a lot of like well sports are too expensive i mean some sports and triathlon is for sure one of them i mean but there's other parts of endurance that you can do you know what i mean running is a big thing you can do and um and still participate and get started and and i just think that they don't see any black faces and so the assumption is that's not for me you know and so you guys just putting my face i mean people hear my voice but not everyone realizes i'm black <clears throat> i do Seriously, mention it all the time voice? <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> I mean, that's, well, sometimes people, you know, people are shocked sometimes when they see me, they expected something else, I guess. But um, I do mention it a lot in, 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 the, in our podcast in regard in, especially in um, contrast to Mike's white, whiteness, <laughs> his paleness. Whiteness. His paleness. <laughs> Those lights don't help you anymore. <laughs> his no. propensity to burn. <laughs> but, you know, just for, for the, I think, you know, in, I mean, really, honestly, like Endurance Zone is going to be the first, like, visual media putting out regular images of an of an african-american athlete in you know in endurance sports other than uh pro marathon running you know and so um so i'm really grateful thank you yeah and and the nice thing we got morgan Lattimore too i don't know if you know morgan he's actually going to be on he's gonna be having a show and i I think the the one thing that i always want to make sure that we that we understand is like we're not specifically going out and saying, Hey, Lindsay, we need you on this. What we're doing is we're creating this collaborative community that we want you to ask questions. We want, it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what cultural background. If you, if you, if you don't like firefighters, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> well, you're an idiot if that happens, because what are you going to do when your house is on fire? <laughs> but I think the, the yeah. biggest thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think the biggest thing that we want to put out there is that, you know, if you, if you, if you don't ask the questions, if you don't um, try to see if, if we can, we want to be here to help. We're going to be creating a foundation to be able to get grants. We, we have some collaborative partners that 
are going to help to put things into action. Because like I was saying before, when Mike asked me about my story, how did it start? Well, my story didn't start by words. My story started by action. And that's how we need to do it through Endurance Zone. We're going to be doing it through action. It's like, ask us what you need to know. Ask us questions that maybe are uncomfortable. That's fine. That's fine. We can have a discussion and then figure out what actions we need to take. And I think that's going to be the biggest thing. And Lindsay, I, I appreciate you putting it out there because that's, it's true. It's like, let's give the opportunity to everyone who wants to do it. I mean, look at, was it, was it in the same year that you did yours, Mike, that was the first covered lady that did the race? I think that might've been the, the year before, but it was the year first, before. yeah, female who, who wore a hijab and uh, mm-hmm. like, yeah, yeah. wore That's the awesome. veil for the first one. Yeah. And I, I, I think it's interesting because when you look at the endurance sports community, um, you know, for the most part, and I can't speak for everybody, obviously there's no hundred percent in any of the world. Um, for the most part, we all love the idea of the why. It doesn't matter who it's coming from. That's yeah. what's so cool. That's what's empowering is tell us your why. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to figure out how to, how to put that why into action. And mm-hmm. just like, just like Mike, I was able to do the gold star initiative and um, out at uh, super to, to, t- it's hard because I get a little emotional, but um, the power of action, the power of positive. Let's be, let me put it this way: the power of positive action has a reach that you can't even understand. Yeah, it goes far beyond. <laughs> yeah, far beyond. Yeah. yeah, and I think that might be a good note for us to go out on. I know we're low on time, mm-hmm. but uh, Rob. I, I, I know we got a lot more to discuss, so we're going to have you back on on age groupies uh, sometime in the near future. But mm-hmm. uh, Lindsay, you have anything more before we close it out? No, this is a great way for me to start my day. Thanks, guys. Yeah, <laughs> ready to go kill it for the rest of the day now. I love it. I love it. Well, we'll do this again tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds and, good. <laughs> and and uh, I will say that next time I'm I'm working out and it's uh, so I'm doing a hundred mile ride on in a couple of days um, for my birthday. Just to you know. It's a ride I've done before, but it's ten thousand feet of climbing, and it's and I I um it's probably gonna be hot, and I when I start to feel sorry for myself, I'm gonna be like, you know what? I'm not wearing fireman gear today, so it's not that hot. It's all right. Exactly, <laughs> and that's my birthday gift to you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, I love guys. It. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. It's, it's been, a, it's been an honor, a pleasure. Thank you. Awesome, Rob. All right, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. All righty. That concludes today's episode of the age groupies podcast with me, Lindsay Hyken and my co-host Mike Ergo. We really hope you enjoyed it. You can follow the show on Instagram at Age Groupies, join our Age Groupies page on Facebook, and look us up by name, Lindsay Hyken and Mike Ergo on Strava. If you have questions, comments, or topic ideas, feel free to email us at agegroupies at gmail.com. If you enjoy the show, please leave a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, as this really helps us get more exposure while we try to grow this little venture. And of course, if you have friends you think might like the show, please be sure to share it with them. But for now, thanks for listening and we will talk to you next week.